Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the light campaign v4.0 and our let's play of Superico Incorporated with Dr. Hans-Dieter Krause at the helm of engine design. And I think there are some things coming up for Hans-Dieter. Not only have we unlocked turbochargers, which he has not yet um, used, but now would be the time. And also what is coming up is not exhaust, but rather a multi-point fuel injection. Yes, how about building a, um, a multi-point fuel injected turbo engine with four valve per cylinder dual overhead cam, all alloy in the 70s? Wouldn't that be fun? I think for that to happen, we need to do a bit more research. And uh, yes, uh, research not, not like this, but rather prototyping. And we are waiting for our first facelift of the Kakapo to appear. Oh, it looks pretty good from our income. Still making a profit despite uh, having to pay off gigantic loans. That's monthly payments of uh, 20 million, roughly. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more than that. <laughs> 20 20 point four. Yes. Uh, and engineering costs as well. And add a little bit more to that because what we are going to start doing now is also design another engine. If we can, let's take a quick look. Uh, this one is occupied. It is occupied with something else. Now, should we make a new one? and see if maybe that can be made into a fancy turbocharged engine later on. I'm not sure if uh, Hans Dieter is a fan of that idea or not. But I mean, if, we are, if we're packaging this idea to him as something that he can just play with, like this is just for him to, to have some fun. It's not going to go into any car. It's, it's just a prototype. It's just a prototype. He can he can try things out with. Gather gather some experience, and uh, and get get some familiarity for the company because he hates the company not having familiarity in important tech. Um, so yes, uh, let's let's try try that on him, shall we? Uh, Yo, Hans Dieter, um, we are looking for an engine that is trying out all kinds of new tech. Would you be keen to uh, have a go at it and and see what you can do? Uh, we would really like to see your your you work your magic on turbocharging and electronic fuel injection. Um, are, are you up for that? Well, I I I, I guess I am, but uh, why why is it not sufficient for me to do it right on the on the correct engine to start with? This is, seems like a waste of time, uh, but okay, your argument about the, uh, the familiarity of the company is quite valid because this really sucks that we can't just build what we want in a reasonable amount of time. So yes, le let, me, let me see what I can do. Uh, we are going into this variant here, which is naked and not designed by proper designers. It's it's not here. Okay, good. So we are going for a turbocharged engine. You're saying like my grandfather did used to do. Uh, that is easy. Okay. So what I want to do is to go with uh, an inline four, of course, because we we don't need more cylinders than inline four. This is just a waste of cylinders. The more cylinder volts you have the more friction there is. So unless you have gigantic engines, like two liters or something, um, you, you, you can't go for larger than this. But even then, inline four is still best thing ever. So I would use inline four up to 20 liters of capacity easy. You just limit it to, to 100 RPM if need be, and that will be fine. Because that's efficient. But, uh, let's see. So we are going to use, despite it being slightly inefficient, uh, we are going to use aluminium. And you wonder why 
Hans Dieter is choosing something that is less efficient. First off, you probably don't even know that it is less efficient because you, you are not as, as skilled as I am in the engine design. Yes. So cast iron is not leading out the heat as quickly as the aluminium engine. And that means um, you are not losing as much heat and thus energy with the cast iron engine. It is slightly more efficient. But if the, the aluminium engine makes it such that you don't have to carry around sacks of potatoes every time, then this is in a car, once it is inside a car, this is much more efficient for the fuel economy. So I'm going to take the aluminium engine. And we already have some familiarity in the dual overhead cam 4, which is quite nice, but let me change the size of the engine too. If we are going for a turbocharged engine, we want it to, to spool at a very low RPM so that we just can cut off the power early, but have very nice efficiency. So let's go with something very big and then see if that is enough to spool the turbo early on because it's, it's 1976 so they, my grandfather was, was spooling turbos at 500 RPM already but this, this shit probably doesn't even want to spool until 3000 so we, we, have, to, we have to really see if we can make it work. Uh, Hypertactic cast? Is this an option? Not really, because of the, uh, the additional costs and engineering time. It's just weird. Um, let's go with the standard stuff. We need very low cam profile and quite low compression. This seems very inefficient, but let me show you how to properly deal with the turbocharger. So we need big intercooler to not lose any efficiency through uh, too warm air into uh, after the compression stage and then we are going to use uh, just a fuel economy preset but we're just going to make it tiny like we, we don't need more turbo than this it, it's any, any turbo larger than my fist is going straight up your back we can use a bit more pa power here more bars and th that should not be a problem to handle we don't need much I think the sweet spot is around something like 0.5 to 0.7 for for fuel economy, maybe even a little bit lower. We, what we really would want, want to do for the cruising is to just offset the pumping losses and gain a little bit of extra extra power from it, which then can be can be used to just be more efficient and instead of being having more power which is great so this looks like a, a good starting point but we first need to complete the engine with uh, oh look look at this we uh, through the the uh, development i've done this has already come down quite a bit in the engineering time which is nice so I'm going to run it very lean, that just means that we need very low compression on this, but I think we can make it work and th this will be good. Uh, for the ignition timing, maybe we are, now that we are on, on fuel injection, uh, I, I think this should be fine at something like 60 or so. Uh, we don't need to rev this high, we, we don't need revs anyway, but the, the head uh, revs no problem. Also, who needs a catalytic converter? This is bullshit. This just makes the engine inefficient. So what we are going for is again the um, none here and reverse flow here because the turbo itself is kind of like a, a muffler too. And uh, it, it has some good sound dampening qualities. So currently the engine is still knocking even though we are at 7.0. This is, this sucks, but let's see what we can do. As you can see, I managed to make the turbo spool below 2000 RPM, but uh, we, can, we can lower it even further. This is not too bad. As you can see, I've now already optimized the turbo a little bit. Uh, I've just made the compressor a, more, a better size compared to, to the turbine so that it's, it's nice and efficient. And what we are seeing here at 0.33 bar, 
we get really nice efficiency, 23.1%. This is better than our uh, our mechanical fuel injection engine, but let's directly compare so that we get the numbers correct. As you clearly can see here, we get a nice bulge for the torque of the turbo and compared to the other engine, this is quite impressive. We, we get lots of power at the high end of my, my driving range uh, of, of RPM. So between 1400, which is close to where I, I, I would drive normally, um, but then up to 2000, which is the absolute maximum you should use, we are getting all the power and the torque and very much efficiency too. Let's have a look here. So we are at right there at 2000 RPM. We reach peak efficiency at 24.18%. And there we have it very nice. I just lowered the compression more, which of course makes the, the engine efficiency outside of boost quite a bit worse, but that means we can have more boost uh, for, for the, the, the place where we want to have maximum efficiency. And this is now above 25%. That are some impressive numbers. But you see how, how really powerful mechanical fuel injection is? Because if we switch over to mechanical fuel injection, we get so much more room to play with the, the RON that we can eke out more efficiency if we want to. Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about all the time. Like, look at this beautiful efficiency. We are topping out at 26.27%. <laughs> this is crazy good. But of course they are stupid and they wanted me to play with some inferior fuel system technology. So I, I'm going to switch over back to single point fuel injection. I guess they want to uh, for me to find out how to combine these two and make some some kind of multiple point fuel injection electronic system which would be very simple I mean I, right after designing this engine I'm this this evening in my free time I'm going to try and design such a system this should be should, should be super simple Of course we don't need the revs in this engine it's just useless why would you ever want to drive at inferior efficiency? This makes no sense to me. We are making a fair bit of power too. This is this is race is almost a race engine at 71.4 horsepower. This is a lot more than than my my other engine and of course you never need it anyway. So I I don't know. Let's let's see. You see with the other one, we are making 58 almost, and here, much shorter rev range, but uh, we are making 71. Now, of course, we need to try out the engine and see uh, what it is like to, to be at 25% efficiency, so listen closely. You can hear the turbo charging. We are getting up the rev range to extreme numbers, 2000 RPM. 2200 RPM almost and there we go peak efficiency you don't want to go much beyond this you have great efficiency there too this is this is uh, crazy numbers but I think this is this is okay to stay there for a little bit but you can't go beyond like here where it starts to drop again this is this is awful if you do so 2400 is your maximum and you can stay below that. All right, well, that is qu quite the engine. That's uh, very efficient. Also turbocharged, so it's not lacking completely in power. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we are going to use this in anything. But having, uh, having a good engineering done in single point EFI before embarking on the multi point, I think that will be coming in handy. Also just refreshing the knowledge on the, on the heads uh, that's huge engineering time otherwise. So, uh, yeah, no factory selected. Let's go here. Wow, okay. That is still long. <laughs> that is very long. Uh, he, of course, did add a point of quality into the fuel system. Of course he did. We are only at plus four, you know. So, um, 
Yeah, that's very much required. Uh, family is still taking forever, but we do want to lower the pressure and we do want to lower the tooling and the process and that makes it pretty quick. We do have a reasonably short engineering time for this facelift that is coming up. So if we wanted to make an engine for that, I don't think that's going to happen. But we could, because at the end of 76, M MPFI should be available. And if, if Hans Dieter is, is correct and he's going to design this in, in his free time this evening, then um, yeah. Yeah, that might be uh, might be an option, but I think then we're going to put it into the next big project because making that production ready too with the turbocharger and everything. You saw I was pulling down the sliders enormously, so I'm just checking here. But yeah, we can't time that anyway. Would be nice to have though. So 1178. That's just four months off. Okay. Yeah, I think we can achieve that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Reliability 29. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, not, not really ready for production, is it? But I think we're gaining plenty of, um, of familiarity with it. So why not? Let's, let's put this one into, into engineering. And the 14.5 million we can just take. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Okay. So sign off the project. Yes, please. And now finally, we can advance time and see how this thing is selling. Well, not the engine that we just designed, but our new facelift. Ooh, 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 ooh. ouch, ouch, ouch. What was going on there? Yeah, well, good markups and stuff. Um, we do probably want to have a bit more stock. The van is doing reasonably well too. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, this is not our new facelift, this is our new car that's selling. It needs a little while to, to get there. Let's see what happens. The economy isn't doing well either. We're losing 10 million each month. Is that a good thing? No, it isn't. Uh, so where... Uh, loan repayments is of course the massive one. Other engine production research. Yeah, I mean, we're just not selling enough cars. The economy is ticking up now. Our factory utilization has gone down. This is quite low now. Uh, yeah, our credit score is pretty awful as well. We are starting to drop. Mm, I think we need that facelift. Okay, we're back up. That's mostly because the economy has recovered and it's recovering steeply. So this is looking good. Oof, okay, this is looking like uh, saving our ass, that, that big economy boost. Uh, these numbers aren't great, are they? But yeah, the first facelift will make it quite a bit better. Let's hope it keeps it up. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we have a factory issue, higher refresh costs. Let's see. Okay, it's just 11.2 million. I think we can take that. I think we can take that. I don't want to lose out on uh, these hit points. And we don't need another loan. Not over 12 million. So, or 11 million. So, yeah. Take that one. We should be getting one for the other factory as well then. Let's see. Oh, it was for both, I guess. Oh, that's nice. In the time where it's down, we're actually making a profit. And that is some very impressive numbers. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, this is looking a lot greener. Whew. I was getting a little worried. But also we sold quite a few of the old cars too. So that, that means yeah, 9,400 sales last month. That's pretty big. But these competitiveness numbers at these margins, that is impressive. So now let's check out where we are with our tech. We do have MPFI unlocked. Our engine is also completed. Familiarity is gained uh, while you're engineering, continuously. Shall we just ask Hans Dieter to uh, maybe consider putting MPFI on there that he designed? Well, it, it, is, it is free time back then. I, th I think that might be a good move. Um, maybe we can base it on this engine. 
even though it's so terrible as a foundation. Uh, it at least already has the turbo. Yeah, let's see how bad that is for the engineering time to put on the MPFI. Uh, Hans Dieter, could you could you see if you can add that new tech that you devised onto your prototype? Is that something you can do? Oh, so now all of a sudden you want this tech too? Okay, well, uh, that, that of course is an option. I can always put on some new technology that improves the engine a lot more. Uh, so let's have a look. We still don't have proper bearings, but uh, we can always work with with the the journal if we wanted to. So this is fine. Uh, we have multipoint and we have nine percent only. Nine percent familiarity. That's a little shit. But if we choose this, it's eighty. F what? Why? Eighty two months. It's probably because the setting, yes, we we need to start a little lower because it's not known to the average Joe, but I'm not the average Joe, I'm Hans Dieter Krause, so I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but this seems to be about the right spot, oh it's getting getting even even cheaper at this, uh, but I don't think you want to use this stuff because it's just horrible. What it does really well though is the octane, because of the multiple point injection this can be optimized for each cylinder and it's quite powerful in that regard. And despite us being at the minus 4 we get 28% almost. This is good numbers, I like this new technology that I made. It's so good, even when you when you have to produce it like, like crap. It still works and just just makes fuel fuel so usage so efficient. So I'm quite happy with this uh, tr trash quality version of my masterpiece, and I think we can progress from here. We have nice efficiency, and that is all that really matters. 25.5, quite impressive numbers, and also it looks quite pretty like this. I, I like it. It's just the shoddy quality that I'm really worried about. Okay, so we have the new engine. Uh, his new design with MPFI. So if we go to the engineering, oh, that is that is cheap. Well, it is really cheap to just add that fuel system like this because of the negative 62.8. Uh, but this is no way production ready, so we need to put that some of those sliders slowly back up to normal normal ratings while leaving the pressure slider down because otherwise this thing is never going to have any familiarities to start with uh, ooh, ouch ouch okay that's that's big ouchies oh man 36 months um yeah but uh, that's a significant improvement uh, another 15.6 million is, is this the engine we want to, to use? 1.6 liter? I, I guess it doesn't want to design anything larger than that anyway, so uh, why not stick with it, right? Um, Alzi is coming up at some point. But, yeah, it's lighter. It's, it's not, not that much lighter. And it is ju it's just easier to build, basically. Um, okay, prototype engine, 36 months. Let's do it. Oh, but of course we have to put it into the Hansmobile <laughs> and, and give that a go. Give that a go, see how it performs, how it stacks up, what kind of economy ratings we can achieve. So there we go, selecting the new prototype. Oof, City Eco is pretty high. 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers. All right, let's optimize. Oh, holy shit, that thing is reaching 233.8 kilometers an hour. And the best I can do is 3.7 liters per 100 kilometers. That is not that uh, high uh, 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 fuel fuel usage. Seven, uh, 3.71. That's uh, <laughs> uh, that is at an average RPM of 1,900. Um, let's calculate that into miles per gallon. Ooh, we are getting there. 63.4 miles to the gallon. 
That is impressive. Yes, uh, I think the Hansmobile is getting there, and that is still before the 80s. With all that newfound power, <laughs> not necessarily newfound top speed because we, I had to limit the gearing speed, but it doesn't matter, it just means um, high acceleration. Look at that, that's impressive. 0.23 Gs, that's, that's almost like a normal car. <laughs> a normal modern car. It doesn't weigh anything, so that's that's probably a bonus. Oh, uh, we didn't even check out if we had any modifications here to uh, the materials we can use. No, not really. So that's all good. Yeah, let's uh, see what track time we can achieve. This thing is is going. Look at it. There is a needle that moves, it, like in a in a way that isn't invisible or uh, where you have to check every five minutes to see if it actually moved uh, that is a 247 yeah yeah like when I think the Hans mobile might might be able to at some point reach uh, 230 hmm but this is is pretty good stuff but yes we still need to uh, sign off that prototype engine so uh, let's let's do that uh, the loans are deactivated agree it's out of the way it's done and with that I think we have done pretty well here let's hope this lasts and keeps us above water despite the economy faltering again and uh, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time <laughs>